What's happening members of League Zero, I am your host Great Kick, and welcome to the semi-finals edition of the Novice Countdown, and here are the few guests, say your name. I am Alianos, the captain of Geometric. Uh, I'm Pineapple, uh, full flex for Wisdom Academy, and off tank. I'm Kuzgo, uh, best coach in the league in Novice, on Geo. Yeah, so I just want to say something first, Kuzgo is the first person to ever be an inter and novice countdown, so that's, that's, that's pretty cool. But yeah, so going on to the first thing we're going to over, go over is the weekly recap, and the first game we have of the week was Wisdom vs Hyperflex, with Wisdom taking it 3-0. to zero. Uh, Titanic, I mean, sorry, Pineapple, you're actually in this game. Uh, so judging by how Wisdom performed and their general flexibility, how was the preparation going to this game? And uh, was the scoreline a great depiction of what turned out? Uh, in terms of preparation, we kind of knew, judging from the uh, plat check game, that they'd probably run like the Ash Fire comps. We kind of prepared for that and kind of like prepared our comps for it and stuff. And because like we had three weeks before, we just scrimmed a lot, just got really good at maps. Like new reaper to position and stuff, we just had it pretty much nailed down. Good to hear, good to hear. I know in a lot of the maps you guys either ran Arisa Sigma, Dive, uh, Brawl comps. W were you were you guys uh, playing all these comps ahead of time and just, uh, or were you guys just going with whatever Hyperflex ran? Uh, no, definitely. We have comps set for like pretty much every map. And we've just been, I mean, like I said, we've just been grinding those comps for the last three weeks, just getting really good at them and, like, getting the fundamentals down. Mm -hmm. uh, so I know it was kind of a surprise for a lot of people that Hyperflex uh, even made to the semifinals with the majority of people actually thinking Plat Chat would. So uh, do you think uh, Hyperflex uh, surpassed or underwhelmed your expectations, considering that they were able to beat a powerhouse in Plat Chat? Uh, I mean, for the fact that they beat Plat Chat, I think they did, like, I think Plat Chat was looking pretty good, but I mean, the fact that they beat them, they... That would just like make them strong by default, but I mean, it gets us. They looked better from the regular season, but still like not beating Blatch at level to me personally. Mm -hmm. uh, Aliano and Kizgo, what did you guys notice that gave Wisdom the edge in this game? They were the better team. They have better mechanics. Like Blatch yeah. is kind of mad. <laughs> it was really like coming coming down to just like player skill overall, um, and I think just like Wisdom is kind of stacked. So, yeah. I don't know. It was kind of a roll, but you know. Yeah, I kind of have to agree with you guys there. Like even in the mirror when on the last map on Icon World where they did mirror there was a Sigma. It just felt like Titanic had the better uh, fair uh, compared to Alucard, and uh, the Hitscan. The I think it was Tuzi, right, who played Hitscan for Wisdom Academy. He was just oh, outclassing yeah, uh, Hyperflex in every way possible. It, I felt like Hyperflex was was contesting. Uh, the game pretty well. I felt like they were putting up a great fight, but just felt on every single aspect was met at whether that be in the tank mirror, the DPS mirror, or even the support mirror. Because I do know uh, Reagan and uh, Reagan did not perform up to standards from what, from what was, was how Wisdom was playing. True. Uh, anyone else have anything to add, or can we just move on? You move on. Okay, I'm so the player of the uh, match this game was Titanic. Oh, do you, do you have something to add, Pineapple? Oh, I was just gonna say that. Shout out to yeah. Thai, because he kind of popped off that game. Definitely That's, deserved player yeah. match. Titanic played absolutely amazing. I'm pretty sure on every single map you played the fair, if I'm not mistaken. And you could definitely see there was a lot of preparation going into those comps, and the execution of that was really good. And there is no honorable mention, so which makes me believe that nobody else voted for anyone else besides Titanic. <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah. So the next game of the week was Geo vs OTW, where Geo took a three to two. Before we even go into the game, uh, <laughs> Alianos, in the most non-biased way possible, <laughs> can you please break down in like um, 30 seconds or 45 seconds the whole situation that happened in this game? All right, um, we we lost the first map. All was good. We had a crash during it, which was kind of a beggar, but I mean, they won fair and square, I guess. We drew Temple. And um, then on King's Road, the game crashed again. They were leading that insane time bank of like 5 minutes 30. Uh, we held them, full held them then, like I guess. And uh, then we wanted to re reschedule. It didn't happen. There were just, it was some drama. And then we rolled them, I guess. I'll pull. Okay, I want to be as not as unbiased as possible. 
it was a good game to watch overall, you know. Uh, I don't feel like it was an accurate representation of both teams, though. Geometric uh, was shorthanded in those last few maps, but they were able to pull it out. And OTW, they also had some issues, whether it be with the game crashing or internal issues after the first or second map. So, this wasn't a... Uh, a good representation of both teams, but you also have to understand that even shorthanded, Geo did end up pulling up the win, and even off-rolling, these players looked amazing. I want to give a huge shout out to Storm. He is absolutely insane on the McCree. I, I, like, not even as a novice player in general. Like, like I'm, I, that's why some of the best McCree gameplay I've seen in like inter novice combined, other than seeing Snipes play on Shanghai Celts, of course. And I feel like that was and a major, Rager. yeah. The, the key, his tracking, like. I don't know how much he's been practicing that here. I know he's usually, if I'm not mistaken, a support player. But uh, he, he is McCree and DBS is very good. But it is. It is very good. He has just like this insane mechanical skill that he just like proves on every every hero. That's why we like over the season we just like put him on different hero, different roles. I think we've played him on every single role. Uh, just because he just like he, he knows the mechanics. He, he, like there's issues about his gameplay. And his stats aren't like master's level or something like that. Yeah, and but you, they're good. And you know, and, but he's good. So yeah. yeah. He's very good. And you know your, your team is doing good when OGW has a change of strats. I know I noticed on uh on uh, Nepal Shrine in particular, they actually swapped end up swapping out to the wrecking ball just to counter storm. And although it did work a few times, you could just see that Geo's coordination overall was always better than uh OTW's when it actually came to protecting uh their uh, his skin player. But I do want to ask Alianos, considering that you were in this game, uh, what were the emotions going through it overall? Because I know, like, one map, uh, you know, you had to forfeit because you're coaching. One map, you had to play shorthanded. So, like, what was going through Geometric's mind during this whole scenario? Dude, it was kind of crazy. Like, we have, like, the recordings of the comms from, like, the last map, map 6 at that point, right? And people are just, like, yelling. It's, it's great. It's absolutely, like, I think the mantle just got fueled by all the bullshit that was going on. It's like, <laughs> so it, it, we might release that eventually because it's actually kind of fun, but you know. Yeah, dude, I, uh, another question to add on to that is, do you think your team's flexibility is what helps you win a lot of these uh, playoff games? I mean, yeah, I, I think so. Like, especially if you, like, come up in a situation where, like, one of our players has to leave or uh, is, like, in a bad mental state, we can just literally swap anyone uh, from any role to any role, really. So as the as the awesome right the, the hit scan player, uh, he can play Anna just fine. He could play like, beat most Anna's in the league. So it's like we just can swap out these players, and it really helps. Uh, Pineapple and Kizgo, from a spectator's perspective, what did you guys see that just gave you the edge through all this chaos? Um, like I I've been coaching like Geo and kind of OTA all season, but mostly Geo. I've stuck with him a lot. And at the beginning of the season, this team this team didn't know how to win. They they literally every single time they they would like drop a map that the whole mental would just be down. They'd be like, bro, we lose, we lose. But like, they they can somehow spark this fire, like with a random pop off moment that it, like causes them to get super excited. But that that was early on in the season. I never expected them to drop a map and time map with like crashes in the middle where they would actually like keep going. Like, I've never seen them actually go with their anger. I've just seen them, like, drop down, be sad, lose the game, leave the game, and say nothing about it, you know? It's actually pull. crazy. Hold up, you have anything uh, to add? Um, yeah, definitely, like, I think Geo's anger, like, frustration definitely fueled them for those last maps, and they just kind of stomped on OTW. Like, it was a close game before, but, like, once that happened, they just kind of rolled them. Yeah, I feel like the the grit and determination coming out of Geo in those last three maps was definitely insane. You know, considering that almost uh, all of novice management, I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to call out anyone here, but considering that almost all of non management was going against Geo, and to see that they still put up this performance despite most of the league not wanting them to, just shows like how hard they're willing to work in order to get this one. And I hopefully they could take that grit and determination, and bring it on to next week when they face with some academy in the finals. But uh. I think we can move on then to the player of the match who undoubtedly had to be given to Silence I feel like his main tank skills were honestly amazing. He was a big reason why they were able to even hold on King's Row to begin with. Uh, 
Uh, he, he was probably the most consistent player on this geometric roster. I feel like you can put up a argument for like a lot of players, but I feel like Silencer was like the backbone for this Geo team during this whole series. Absolutely. Like, um, I think on King's Row, before the map crashed, he like charged off the map completely like randomly and was really mad about that. And he just like, I think, had to prove it to himself that he is like the best main tank in the league and just like went ahead and just like shattered some fools. It was great to uh, it was great to watch, yeah. honestly. You know, I've known Tyrantor for a long time. I played I played against him in multiple leagues and I never played with him. But to see him actually go from like a like a bench warmer and toker to honestly performing up to the standards, uh, in a really competitive novice division is really uh outstanding to see for him. Uh, but going on to the honorable mention, we have to give it to SD Zone and he played the hit scan for his geometric. He honestly played fantastic as well. Uh, I believe he played McCurry and Ash, if I'm not mistaken, Alianos. Uh, he played a bunch of stuff. Yeah, he played, he played uh, Reaper, May, Ash, yeah. McCree, all these, all, all heroes. Tracer probably. Unfortunately, he's been getting a lot of the dark light here because, of course, Storm had that epic performance in that last map. They were kind of taking out the spotlight. But uh, SD Zone also performed really, really well in the, in the maps that he did play. Uh, DPS and support, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he's just really consistent and that's like really good to have on the team. Just like a consistent player. Uh, anyone else have to add anything before we go into the predictions? Alright then. Uh, so let's go into the lat. <coughs> sorry about that. <coughs> Whoa, sorry about that. So the last segment that we're going to be looking at is predictions. And uh, so there's only two people here can actually give predictions, me and Kizgo. But before we go into that, I feel like I have to ask Pineapple and Aliano. So Pineapple, going to you guys. Uh, how was your preparation going uh, going into this finals uh, against a strong geometric team? How are you guys preparing, and uh, what do you guys expect? Uh, we're just working on like our general play, like getting our mechanics like to where they should be, getting our like positioning comms in a good spot, and I think we're doing a good job with that. So I think like we're pretty much prepared for the match, and I'm we're kind of expecting Geo to run what they have been, but I mean we don't know that. So <laughs> yeah, uh, Alianos. What about you? I mean, it's been largely the same. Like, it's it's wisdom does run like a lot of like predictable cons as well, so we can just like scrim any high yellow team or like diamond team, I guess, and get a good preparation out of it. So I think it's just like gonna be like our best rosters going at it, and it's gonna be great. Yeah, one thing I did notice from both uh, from both wisdom and Dreamer is the flexibility. You know. One map you're going to see Wisdom Academy playing Dive, the next one they're going to be playing Arisa Sig, Brawl, or even Ryan Sigma as we saw from that map. And even these combination of players, you can see uh, Red Knight in for a map, you can see Raigai and Pineapple, and you can even see both Red Knight and Raigai in. So just seeing those uh, those uh, flexibility on both teams is going to be really an X factor going into this match, because I know Geometric also has a lot of players that can flex. Uh, so yeah, so... In terms of predictions, uh, both me and Kisco have Geometric winning. I have Geometric winning 4-2, just based off the sole performance of how Geometric played in those last few maps against OGW. But Kisco has Geo winning 4-0, so I want to ask Kisco. Wisdom is undefeated throughout this whole season. Why do you think they're going to take zero maps off? They have Terra in the door. No, I'm talking. you said 4-0 Geo. Yeah, they're the better team. Oh, Terra and Terra will fire this team up. Oh, okay. Really, uh, really good in-depth analysis there. Uh, anyways, and they're better. <laughs> anyways, the reason I'm saying Geo is gonna win this is I feel like Wisdom is really good. I mean, they're the, they're the second team in leagues their history to ever have a perfect season, uh, and they're definitely showing that uh, mentality right now, considering they haven't lost a map uh, in the playoffs yet. But I just feel like with real, I mean, Geometric has just has the better players. I feel like Silent Sword. Mm. I, I feel like Geo has the better players when they have momentum. So I feel like if Geo is able to take the first or first few maps in general, I feel like that's just going to be a flame that's never going to go out. I feel like if Wisdom wants to win this map, they're going to have to take momentum right away early on. If they're not able to, they have to somehow swing the momentum their way. And that's very difficult for a lot of teams. Even in the Hyperflex maps for Wisdom Academy, you can even see once Wisdom Academy got that 2-0 lead, you could see Hyperflex was just in shambles the rest of the game. So it's definitely going to be about who is able to take momentum first, and who's able to sustain the momentum the longest. Mm -hmm. I, I just think, uh, I think, like, finals are the place you're going to have the most, like, confidence to, like, get in there and get things done. And I think Gia's just going to take advantage of that. I have to agree with you there. 
Uh, Pineapple and Alianos, you have any final statements? Uh, yeah, I definitely do agree with you that I think that whoever wins, it's probably going to be like a 4 0 or a 4 1 or a 4 2. Like, I think it's definitely going to be like momentum based. And like, whatever team can hold and like keep it will probably win. Yeah, this. Honestly, I'm going to say it's going to be a really close finals, you know? I'm having kind of flashbacks to like League Zero Novice, although it isn't to the same degree of standards with Platchat, for example. But Geometric definitely came into the playoffs as the underdog, right? They didn't perform as strong as they did in the first half of the season, uh, but they ended up being destroyed near the second half. Uh, near the end, and to see them actually pull off an upset against OTW, who performed extraordinarily well in the second half, uh, you know, you have to start thinking. Oh, uh, both these teams have momentum coming into this game, so it's going to be about who executes it better. Yeah, I mean, largely it's also going to be like a clash of mentals, you know? Where's the better mentals going into the game? Like, if Wisdom somehow like gets boomed before the game, which I don't see happening, they could play a lot, lot worse, or just change with Geometric. But like, I don't think we have corpse on that day, so, uh, no, unlikely. No corpse Bjorn or corpse Moira, unfortunately. No, no corpse is benched, unlikely. Yeah. But I think, if, does anyone have any final statements before we wrap this whole thing up? I'm good. Terminator is the best manager. True. Okay. Yeah, so it's I think... Okay, okay. <laughs> so I think we can wrap it up there, guys. So thank you guys all for watching this week's edition of The Novice Countdown. If you guys did enjoy, please let, please leave a like and subscribe, and we'll see you guys all next week. Peace, nuts. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the intermediate part of the countdown. This is the final intermediate countdown. Let's go. I've been here for like 14 times or something. This is kind of scuffed. Here we have the manager and captain for each team in the playoffs, in the finals, my bad. First is Lilithy. You're supposed to say something. <laughs> oh, I'm Lilithy. Yeah, I, I got you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> All right. Next is Madam. Hello. Next is Great. Hi, I'm gonna lose. Yeah, I agree. And here is Copy. Hello, uh, it's Copy, the man that put Croc in a peach. Yeah, he's also going to lose. Yeah. He's also going to lose. Yeah. Uh, all right. Moving on to the first game. It's going to be Vitalize versus Yoink. That we have to go cover. Yes. Uh, the player of the match was Dibs, and the honorable mention was Jewelt. Uh, great and Copy. Can you guys just talk about how you guys were in the game and what you guys like felt during the game? Yeah. Kind of steamrolled. So, okay, so we went into uh, the first round of... Um, it was the, the one with the big old tower in the middle. I, uh... And basically, we thought they were going to run dive, so we ran out with a conflict counter dive, and they didn't run dive, and then we lost that point. And then after that, we had our game plan for how we were going to play the other two maps, and we predicted what they were going to run perfectly, and we kind of steamrolled them. I'm kind of cracked on the Orisa, what can I say, and then Jolt capitalized on my... Dude, my polls are nuts. I read Joshua's Orisa guide. Anyways, then we went into Volskaya Industries. We kind of lost first point in like under a minute but we usually lose first point in under a minute in scrims and then we pull out the rest of the time until overtime and then we kind of steamrolled our attack and won that map and then we went to king's robe and uh uh i should have probably not say this because the shanghai people here but we haven't won king's row in over like three months but you know we lost that map oh well we went to dorado we do that juicy london spitfire strat Mad, i'm gonna leak our strats i'm uh i'm gonna I'm kind of glad uh, I didn't play because I cannot win against Luxie. That's what I want to say. We got yeah. Luxie's pretty cool. Um, no, however, I feel like you guys owe us money for winning Why? because we we pre boomed Luxie for you. Uh, Shanghai <laughs> did a scrim against Trigonometric a few days before the game. And all I'm going to say is when Luxie showed up, they were getting spawn camped by Soldier Bastion dive. Okay. Um, but, was, uh, no, yeah. Wait, was it Sim Bastion? It was something like that. And uh, we didn't want to show our Dorado strap, but we're kind of glad we did. You guys have a Dorado strap? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's called, it's called... Uh, usually it's the... called losing, but we won that one. Yeah, Ooh, usually, that's it's, a good strap. Usually, usually it's called, oh, let's hope the other team isn't smart, and it kind of worked for this one. Yeah. So. Okay, yeah. okay. We have a strap, too. So on King's Row, uh, we put Mad on DPS, and we put Snipes on off tank, uh, oh, no. and then we and put, put Vantage on main tank. And you put um, Tyler on the bench. That is correct. That's a oh, win. That's a W right there, dude. That's a dub, boys. Listen, all I'm saying, Matt is going to be the first person in League Zero Intermediate to play all three roles and then win a final. 
That's kind of nuts. I hope this It'd be four if you count the this this, this grand okay. finals. I'm gonna make sure this grand finals is more underwhelming than the, the advanced grand finals of last season. <laughs> oh, I don't know if that's wait. possible. Oh, it's oh boy, it's oh, possible. You, you you all right, listen, listen, we all know Shanghai is going to choke and lose because we are bad. But that's okay. Do you not? Did you not finalize it? We lost the DKE. We, we lost, lost the, the powerhouse. You have yeah. a powerhouse twice. Powerhouse is good. They have Auspect. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, real good. Hey. We should talk about that Shanghai game. That was pretty good. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Moving on to the next game. Uh, let me say. Okay. okay, calm, calm. Okay. Moving on to the next game. It is Shanghai versus Powerhouse. It's it's Shanghai versus Powerhouse. Who, who is Shanghai playing? Sorry, I didn't catch that. Uh, Powerhouse, okay? Wait, Thank did you. Pick play? Was Greg pick in? Uh, what? No, Greg, Greg wasn't in. That's why, that's why Powerhouse lost. This yeah, game. yeah, I know. Uh, the player of the match was Poopy. What? <laughs> <laughs> That's what it says! Yo, who was that? Who, I, uh, hold up. Yo, who is this? Oh, oh. I mean, it's a Lilithy, but it was on Poopy, and I kind of agree with both. So. Uh, the player of the match was Poopy, aka Lilithy, and the honorable mention was Vantage. Uh, Shanghai uh, gamers. Can you guys just tell me how you guys prepared for this match, what you guys felt in the match, and how you felt about the outcome? Uh, we scrimmed a lot coming in, and we did the thing where we have a lot of set strats the week before, and then it's Saturday in warm-up, and we throw them all out the window and play something new. Um, we need to stop doing that, but it's kind of fun. I don't know. Um, <laughs> But I feel like I have to leak something, and it's that I only got player of the match because I played Moira, because the rest of my team is brain dead and doesn't understand that Ana is better, and so they rage. And I'm a little tilted because we just had a scrim where they begged me to go Moira for like 20 minutes. Yeah, Matt can I... confirm this, and I'm still a little malting about it. I don't know why your Moira is so much Nail, fun. Nail jail She's is not thing, fun right? at all. Listen. Yeah, I just died from like Auspect a... because I didn't have any cooldowns on Moira. <laughs> just play her like on, a I would have won that. Play yeah. Her like a DPS, man. I mean, I have I, there, I have a game like old Community Snowball Cup where it had like a ninety-one percent kill participation as Moira. It was a yeah, great game. That league doesn't count. Yeah, true. But, but it was it's... fun. I played Moira like Auspect, a Auspect man. It's awesome. Yeah, that's... Anyway, um, oh, yeah. more seriously, the game was pretty good. Uh, I'd say. We were definitely in control for most of it. We rolled control, we rolled... Uh, actually, we didn't roll Anubis, we should have. We fucking threw uh, our defense, and then uh, we got... We, we died to a random 3k diva bomb. Was, I mean, it was good placement, but we died to a diva bomb. Uh, otherwise, we would have capped it like two minutes more than them. Um, and then on our second point attack, Vantage barraged without calling for assistance directly into a full matrix. And then uh, we only had time for two attacks, so we lost that. But then we held uh, through a nano blade. Dad chased me into a blizzard, by the way. So thanks for that. Um, didn't go well for him. Uh, and then the other what was it two maps? Yeah, the other two maps we rolled. Yeah, you guys are really good. I can't. Yeah. No, we're we're bad. You're gonna beat us. No, that's my line. All right, Stop. all right, 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 we are moving on to the predictions, which I am the only one predicting because I am the only person who can predict because everyone else is going to be biased and say that their team is going to win. Uh, what the fuck? What the fuck is on this thing? I say that Shanghai will win 4-3. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. So, yeah. uh, I mean, the reason no, 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 no. the reason why I think that Shanghai is going to win 4-3 uh, is because they've just been so strong this whole season. Without a doubt. Vitalize had some ups and downs. They're definitely on up here. They're like the London Spitfire. They're on fire at the end of season one of Owl. 
But They're um, not Korean though. No, no, I, I really like this Poodoo. You picked yeah. it against us this past two weeks, and the commentator curse is really coming in handy. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> <I'm gonna climb. laughs> no, 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 no. But I do, I do have small. I do have, I do have faith. I do have faith in the Vitalize because they were partnered with Ghosts only. So that's why I have faith in them. But I, we haven't scrim. We don't scrim and goats only. I don't. I don't think that you realize that. Did you guys only scrim goats? That would've been pretty. That would've been pretty funny. I wish. Okay. I mean, they got dumpstered I, in the regular season, but wait till the show match. If, they if, I, if, if I, right now, right now, if I was everyone else, I would also be predicting Shanghai just because you guys have easily been the best team in intermediate the entire yeah, nice, season. Dude. And we lost uh, a DKE, then we lost a DC, then we had to reverse. I don't know if we were the what? best team throughout the entire season. I would um, say you were. I mean, not, like, not, no, 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 not through there, the entire season. I think. Like, we, okay, but you guys were top two, top three. The I think we were season. finally able to put together a lot of our pieces with the coaching stuff. We got in, like the last like two weeks, and then like the week going into the playoffs, like, we really improved a lot. Oh, yeah, a uh, shout out to a uh, legendary Jewel. Uh, we found him at a random scrim. And then I asked him to coach for us as a joke, and he said yes, and then he's we, helped us a lot. We're we doing the shout out to Ava, shout out to uh, Ava, Garitar, yeah. Garitar. All, all the high society B teams. The high society B teams heart. carrying us right now. Wait, hold up. There are mental health coaches. Why are they coaching you? Because uh, I don't know. Uh, oh, uh, shit. Uh, we're going to have a conversation. Oh, shit. Wait, no, 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 you have the, you have the, you have the bad ones, we have the good ones, you have, like, Sebs and no, so the Sebs is very good. Oh, I, I Nick, like Sebs. Nick, Nick, yeah, you, have, you have the you. Airbender, yeah, you got the Airbender, but we got the good parts. I've just been, uh, drinking some pineapple juice while listening to you guys bicker. Wait, are we gonna have our strawberry milk segment like we did last time I was what on? strawberry milk? Oh, wait, I, I, Hey, wait, what are you guys I, drinking? drinking? I have Dr. Pepper, listen. I have, uh, I have ice. I have, I, I have, I have pineapple juice. I have a bottle of acetaminophen. I have ice with a side of water. <laughs> you know what's funny? This is even less obnoxious than the time that you have all the people on that just spam the soundboards. <laughs> we we talked in Morse code. I didn't yeah, even know. I didn't even. I literally <laughs> skipped it. It's only funny uh, when I make random noises. Wait, I'm allowed to flame people. It's countdown. Uh, no, you can. I don't care. Yeah. Do uh, it. I, I didn't avoid it because of because of uh, the soundboards or anything. I just saw Platinum go on it, so I didn't watch it. Ooh, platinum? Cool. I don't think Platinum was on that one. What? That's a Platinum bow thing. It's the same soundboard. I'm pretty sure it was I on thought one. it was Spork, Chicken, and someone else. No offense to Plat. Um, you just never respond to my DMs, so oh, I always have to. Wait, 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 I always have to. Plat is on the list. Hundred cut. He's on the list. Yeah, he's on the list. He's on the list. <laughs> he's on the list. We can't leak the list. Wait, 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 wait. Great. Is that is that for your game or our game? What? What's for my game? What, what? Oh no, I was just hoping you would talk about it. Oh, oh I imagine I know what that is actually. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's move on. Uh, so, so what do you want us to talk about, Peter? About uh, so how are you guys preparing for this, and what are you guys afraid of the other team? Why are you guys afraid of the other team as you are? Okay, so okay, so for us, the reason we needed the game to be moved to Monday is because Nemo's still not back in town from his vacation. He's getting back like Friday night, which means we'll only, we'll only have a scrim Saturday and then maybe Sunday and then Monday. So we're gonna have Yo, to where did work. he? Where did he go? Where did he go? Like he's, I think he's in Texas right now. He's in uh, Texas. Yeah. Fun. He's probably, he's probably watching this as he's coming back. Oh, you know what's really funny is that'll be the second time that like someone in the grand final has returned like two days before due to vacation. Yeah, can I'm we, glad you're able to reschedule because we, we were all, we only had one script. Wait, can we, can we have advanced reschedule also? Because like the novice game like goes on right before our game on Monday also. Just Monday, it's just a whole Monday game. Can we <laughs> schedule advance for 9:30 on Monday? Yeah. Let me DM Zero. Tell him to. DM me, see if we can figure something out. <laughs> see if we can get this big business going Yo, I'm not gonna lie, Acri better put me as a caster for the advanced yeah, uh, game. Yeah, do you wanna cast our game? Wait, wait, we got Yo, 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 I'll, I'll, ca I'll cast the intermediate game. I'll ask Acri, sure. Climbs up the yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you wanna shout cast? Yeah, I wanna shout cast. Okay, here, this is good. I like this, I like this. We'll, we'll, we'll discuss business later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll cast also. Yeah. Yes. DM me, DM me. Okay, so, uh, so you wanted to talk about, like, oh, the shit. Okay, so how we're preparing. Uh, we haven't really prepped yet. We did some VOD review of our own stuff, and then, uh, I mean, I would watch Shanghai gameplay, but it's, like, kind of hard to watch, so, uh, <laughs> I just get that part. 
It's like and then, literally just that Tyler guy <laughs> fucking booming the enemy team. Yeah, it's Listen, literally... you can say that, and Tyler knows that he is a, 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 a hair away from being replaced. Oh. Uh, I mean, he instantly <laughs> zeroes over, I will sign the silver main tank. Um, <laughs> but he, he knows, Tyler knows. Uh, we actually, we shipped him a new chair, and what we didn't tell him is that we put tasers into the arms of the chair. So every time he doesn't block a shatter, uh, we press a button, and Tyler gets punished. Oh, so um, that's why you just hold right click all the time. It's not false. It is actually physically conditioned. Uh, it's like an animal, actually. No, no, I, I respect it. Yeah, I mean, you gotta teach those main tanks something, because God knows they're they just, can't think for themselves. Just bribery players. We just say. As a main tank, I agree. Uh, well, there was something we were gonna say, but uh, on King's Row, Tyler played very well on King's Row. He hit something like 20 something shattered. Yeah, I, think Owo, I think with Owo was just getting just got mentally boomed after the second map. The fact that they didn't mm -hmm. win that. I, I talked to Owo and he, he gave it his all. He said as soon as uh, we stopped them for the first time on third point on Gibraltar, he knew it was over and he just kind of started, I don't know if he said, but he said he kind of started crying a little bit. And I, I completely can respect that. Like to have the thing you've worked for for three months, you know, for yeah. 10, yeah. 15 hours a week, just end, it, it sucks. I mean, yeah, I, I yeah, had a little experience with that from last year. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I was, you know, upset. I, 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 I have a lot of respect for Owo. He did yeah. really well. Um, yeah. He's really good. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm the one that's proud to say that I'm the one that scouted Owo for Powerhouse. Shut and I love that guy. I love that guy. I love Owo. Hey, Copy, really tell good. me how much about, uh, or tell me about how much you wanted snipes for Powerhouse. Because I know you uh, talked about that before. Well, dude, literally, if I was, if I had any more control of that team, Snipes would have been our first pick instead of Kef. Not and figuratively. I, are you sure? No, like literally, like literally. I, was, I, dude, I saw the first time I saw Snipes play. It was on an Ilias match in Pugs, and he literally didn't miss a shot for like over two minutes. I was like, dude, this guy. The first crazy. time, all right, I met Snipes in a Jumper Town game. Um, right after i think i found out i was a manager and it was a high society pub and i was there and i don't think anyone knew like people thought i was playing and so they put me in and i uh was playing baptiste and we were playing double shield you know back then it was it was yeah. double shield meta and uh someone goes hey their widow's pretty good be careful and i'm jumping up and i go hey is that a widow and i get shot in the face yeah okay, no, snipe, we, it was snipe. Snipe. okay but snipes okay. is just insane no, 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 no. We, we get it we get it get his dick out of your mouth you get it i, I, I want i want to shove deeper man uh this, oh. like snipes is so <laughs> Yeah, but uh, you know what Snipes yeah. really loves? He loves getting called the carry of Shanghai. That's not because he hates it. But... <laughs> yeah. No, dude, I, he yeah, hates it I a mean, lot. I mean, I wanted to team with Snipes, but uh, right now. shout out, shout out to Dad for not letting that happen. But Ooh. I mean, I'm glad he was hey. able to find success with you guys. And now I gotta face him in finals, so it's uh, gonna be oh, fun. Wait, hold up. Here, I have something to share that will not make Vitalize happy. I mean, oh. we're not happy. We're at an all-time low right now. Man, this is yeah. on the load. We hate each other. Load. We all went out. They're about to put me in front of a peach. We're definitely, we're definitely not buying this silence. Yeah, we're about to, the copy is going to go in the peach next week. Next week. <laughs> all right, here. Uh, all right, I'll put it in memes and links. Go look at memes and links. Oh, what God. does this even turn into? <laughs> I can't. Oh, shit. That is not what I needed. That's what? not right at all. There. Alright, I have the actual thing now. I can't post it. There. Oh, there. Wait, what? Why did he leave? I don't know. I was about to ask if you moved him or something. No. What? They, they both left. That's kind of weird, champ. Are they having their own countdown? Uh, I physically cannot move the thing because Akari's gonna fucking yell at me. And uh, like, uh, and beat me. Oh, they're all the way at General One. Oh my God. <laughs> you guys are scuffed. You guys are actually wow. scuffed. That's like Akri, Akri's gonna beat me now. Akri is gonna yell at me. You didn't move anything. <laughs> you sent us a link that fucking took us to a different voice channel. <laughs> you really picked us out. Yes. Why did you need to do that at all? That's what Where did it take you? I don't know. It just it, like it left the voice channel like disconnected, and then like That's it so didn't funny. do anything. It, it, it probably tried to take us to the Shanghai he server. probably tried to take you to the Shanghai server. Bro. <laughs> wow. But you're not in. Bro, man, that's very interesting. 
It's very interesting. We have a lot of fun. Okay, Pooter. Pooter, go on to the next, the next segment. Next segment. Next That's, segment. it's the end. No, it can't be the end. No, not already. We legitimately just go over the games and do the predictions. There's nothing more. Okay. Oh, yeah, you wanted to talk about, like, what we're scared of Shanghai. So. Yes, scared. Dude, what are you know, scared about? The thing that, uh, I have to say, it's Snipes. You get, oh, my God, that guy is so good. Yeah. So sexy. Yeah, Snipes, what I'm scared yeah. about, the, the, the biggest thing I'm scared about with Shanghai right now is that we might actually win. That's yeah, what I'm oh, of. no, so, oh yeah, so what I said, like, so before the Wait What game, I was doing a, a live stream, you know, Twitch TV slash Copy Dog, <laughs> and um, I was talking about the game because someone in chat asked, I was like, the, like, the, I, I was, I was like, I'm fine if we win, but I'm more worried about Wait What losing because of how bad they're gonna look. And it's kind of the same thing with Shanghai here. I'm more, like, I don't care if we win. I mean, we're having the time, we're I having do. a great time. But if we, if Shanghai loses, it's going to look so much worse than that. So um, so I'm just one quick okay. thing. As one wise man once said, this is actually a legitimate statement, and I, I can never feel more true about it. Uh, we're the best we've ever been right now. I'll say it. Everyone's <laughs> the been. the strongest it's like, ever been. With, with, with prior three. man, like, with prior man, part man four. With prior management, like prior players, like after scrims, everyone will just leave. Everyone will be upset even if we won the scrim. Like no one will want to stay around it. Like after after it scrims, now we just sit cool, bro. We just chill out. You know, maybe play maybe play like some Risk, Risk Global Domination. That's a, that's a good good game. You guys have a fun game. game. Uh, oh, Overwatch. Risk. Overwatch. Overwatch is trash. Yeah, but with that, okay, I'm going to also put this out there. Without a change in management and vitalized, we wouldn't have made finals. Yes. People can believe it or not, um, but that's just true. You know, it is what it is. I would like... It is, it is what it is. All I got to say is we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the prior management. The prior management drafted a god. And, and that, that god is the up. only, only remaining, yeah, I'm the only remaining person who's draft. Mr. Great Claw right now. Himself. Actually, Mr. I think Great Shanghai, Club. isn't Shanghai the only team with, you're, you're still running your rosters in the draft, right? Outside of, uh, uh no, yourself. Vantage. Oh, Vantage. Yeah, and and swap myself. positions, and I, I think, find myself. I think you guys are the one team that's, you and Powerhouse. We have are, Powerhouse Blaze, like aspect. Aqua, yeah. Blaze and Aqua the, and Touch are the only people from the draft that we no longer have on our roster. And Bolter, sorry, I guess. Well, yeah. I, meant, I meant like you're starting. Uh, starting, yeah. Bakery. The only difference is Aqua Vantage, or Aqua Bakery. Aqua and Bakery, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. really the same. Yeah. And then for, for Powerhouse, it was just Aspects. Just Aspects, yeah. That's, that's really good. So, yeah. Well, didn't they start like coffee? For a while, it's kind of they, no, they, well, I was supposed to start in double shield because I mean my sigma is like actually good, but Gavon Steva was better, so they started him. Yeah, Gavon's pretty good. This is good. This is good. We're reflecting on you know the early, the, you know, early in the season. You know, I don't want to look back on early season by the way. I had to join this garbage team called by the way. Wait, that's weird. I, I can take credit. I, a div a team that I think I, I can right. take credit for getting copy on Vitalize because I think. Oh we, yeah. I, I, I think our manager was currently unhappy with the situation where off tank, so I was like, oh, I think I know a guy. I know Copy Dog wants out. So, uh, that's true. now we're here. Now we're here. Yeah. Also, uh, didn't Madam go from a uh, flex support over to off tank again? Yeah, she did. Oh, yeah. yeah. And people were sleeping on mad, like, oh, why is Lily doing this? They have so many good off tanks. Oh, I never. Oh, I, why is. I, I, just like I just remember Madam still... from Diva. Yeah, yeah Madam was Madame a Madame great Diva yeah. last year, and um, still is. I didn't know Madam Sig, but I was like, oh dang, that's kind of spicy when I got to the Shanghai yeah. game. I was like, whew, I lost. Some good Maybe I'll lose say be a lot, be, be ready for a lot more roll swaps in the final. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you guys are about Wait. to lose the three main tanks, so it's like... No, you can't say that, you can't say that. Oh shoot, you guys are going to lose, uh, win to three main tanks. Yeah, yeah. You gotta be picked against us. It's worked mm -hmm. so far, maybe it worked again. Uh, all Twitter, right. any additional comments before I end the show? As before you end the show? <laughs> all right, well, I'm that's the host. Wait, I'm Wait, the host second. now. Yeah, yeah, what, what? Hey, Pruder, guess what? Oh my god, you DM me again. What do you want? Hey, hey Pruder, guess what? Akka's gonna hate editing this. <laughs> Akka <laughs> hates all of us already. <laughs> hey, Pruder, hey, Pruder, guess what, guess what? This Let's guy. Just say it already, copy like spit it out. Cooter, he, has to, he, has say, he has to say what? He has to say what? Hey, Cooter, hey, Cooter, hey you what? just said the nerd word. You just said what? <laughs> Cooter, guess what? Uh, what? 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 Cooter, what? 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 Cooter, Cooter. Yeah. Cooter, guess what? Chicken butt. 
You fucking ruined it. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you can't join anymore. You can't join anymore. It's all good. It's all good. Okay. Hey, fuck you. Madam, are you gonna do it? I, I can. Uh, do you want to? If only if you want me to. I mean, I don't care. Uh, are they in another voice channel? Because I'll drag them back in because we gotta, we gotta end. We gotta end. I can't see them in any other voice channel. Oh my god, they actually all left. Alright. So, this went off the rails Great a bit, stuff. but, uh, thanks for tuning in to the intermediate part of the countdown. My name is Poodoo Scooter. I was joined here with Lilithy, uh, Great Cub, and, uh, uh, Copy. And right now, I only have Madam. Just say bye, say bye. Goodbye. Yeah, all right. Uh, see you guys uh, next season. Wow. All right, bye. What's happening, ladies and gentlemen of League Zero, and welcome to the the advanced segment of the countdown, the second to last episode of the season. We got one more after the finals. Uh, that should be interesting. Some... Uh, ideas I have there because it's going to be a lot shorter but this will be slightly longer than that episode we got the uh, the semi-finals to recap some interesting games this past weekend but before we get into those I'll introduce the guests uh, going from top to bottom we got uh, Flawless formerly of Guangzhou now just uh, just a caster yeah just a caster and uh, bitch field coach for <laughs> team flush <laughs> I I still don't understand that comp but anyways we got uh, <laughs> Let's see, former manager for Hangzhou slash uh, DPS for Ghost Only now, Recto. Hello. And then we have, oh god, what, what accolades do you have? You got uh, Season 0 uh, Champion, you got uh, Season 2 Flex DPS Rollstar, Flex DPS for Flushed Nero. Hello everyone, how is everyone doing? And uh, anyways, getting back to the games of this past weekend, some interesting games, actually some exciting games, honestly. Uh, some some upsets, or I guess one upset, one kind of expected, honestly. Uh, we'll, go, we'll go into the first match first, which was the upset one, Newt Newt versus Easy Clap. I don't think uh, very many people were expecting Newt Newt to 3-0 Easy Clap, aside from maybe Flush. They seem to be pretty confident in the Easy Clap not being up to the task without Wannabe. Obviously, he's yeah. not Scion. Yeah, yeah uh, it was to the point where they didn't have Wannabe, and the reason that they didn't have also Gag Bag, so that they <laughs> had to play Falcon on DPS, I'm pretty sure, and then they had they had nobody on the off tank, so they had to put him on... It was really uh, crazy. They had to, like... I think what did they do Falcon went off tank, and then Cal went DPS, and then yeah. they had Plasma on Flex support, which yeah. is a whack roster. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna be real. <laughs> I think... Falcon on flex tank was the reason why it was such a one-sided match score-wise. Because you see most of the fights that they lose, especially on King as well, the fact that they were running Sigma over D.Va is really yeah. detrimental to their chances. Yeah. It's very interesting. They they definitely... I, I don't think they ever liked to run meta. Eventually, I think it was Cal... Or no, Koodle actually had to swap over to Mei. And they did... Better. Cal, Cal was running Mei the whole yeah, time. No, oh no, on King's yeah. row, uh, Cal went on the Reaper. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking of yeah. Cal and Reaper at that point. But um, <clears throat> even when they were running Mei, like, it was closer, but it wasn't particularly close. Like Kaigo and Jazza being able to have practiced on the meta just looked so much better overall. Yeah, Kaigo and Jazza are definitely a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, Jazza's really good in terms of Kaigo. <laughs> yeah, I would know I picked them both, up. Uh, both now in Crusaders Academy. Oh, that's um, right. <laughs> I remember seeing that, yep. Or, no, I had to post that anyways. <laughs> yep. Honestly, though, I was pretty impressed. I think it was, uh... Might have been Volskaya, <clears throat> where Koodle and Jazza went, like, head-to-head -head on the Widow duel, and I, I was really impressed that Jazza was actually winning the majority of those. Yeah, He's cracked. He's insane. Like, he's he's an yeah. unsung hero <laughs> for, uh, for his scans, in all honesty. He's pretty, pretty insane. Yep. Unsurprisingly, he got player of the match. Buffalo got uh, honorable mention there. Yeah. Fun match, though, in all honesty. It was close enough where it didn't feel like a complete blowout. Uh, I did host that one, so I did get a first-hand view of it. It was pretty entertaining, but it was pretty obvious from like the second map onwards that New yeah. was just going to take it. Yep. And... Interestingly, oh, God. I think... 
I, I don't remember the exact numbers, but Kaigo's ult efficiency on Mei wasn't very good. But yet, uh, they still managed to win most of the ult fights, which I found really fascinating. Maybe it was just sloppiness from uh, Easy Yeah, Clap. it's just, I think, because Easy Clap uh, don't really... Well, they, some of them do care, but like they don't really care at all. They like don't scrim at all, so it's like they just play very, very sloppy because... You yeah, know, it's easy clap. Come on. <laughs> yeah, maybe it was just in comparison, but Nutu looked way prepared for this match. Yep. Also, though, adaptations in game. A lot of the times, easy clap would. Uh, they have the fundamental problem of the disconnect between the front line and the back line, probably because plasma doesn't play often in those scrims. But you know, when Yusuf yeah, was going to... aggro, Newt Newt was just really on top of that, and they were really able to react to whatever easy clap you like on that regard. Yep. The tempo. Yeah. yeah, more more than once, uh, Falcon on Sigma or like Yusuf on Ryan would just be caught way too ahead, and Kaigo would just wall him off. It's like, oh well, there goes the main tank. There goes the off tank. <laughs> <clears throat> Fun match though. Honestly, probably worth going back and watching. But honestly, I think the the next match was uh, a lot closer in some regards. Granted, it's the same scoreline, but uh, having watched the VOD, I was like, wow, that that was a lot closer than I think Flushed w is willing to admit. Uh, granted. They still took a 3-0, so, you know, take that however you will. But, uh, yeah, Flush did take uh, Flock 3-0. Honestly, a lot closer. The Flock actually yeah. brought it to him. That was a, that was a close match. I yeah, I, I have to give it to Flock. I mean, when I was going into this, I thought it was going to be a kind of a clean sweep. However, I think Flock really did adapt to what, like, they were expecting. And they kind of destroyed Bitchfield, but it's it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm not crying. I'm I'd not like crying. to, I'd like to clarify something right now. <clears throat> I had literally no idea of the, any of this comp when we were running out <laughs> on this. The main reason we ran Weeple on the first point of, uh, what's it called? Bijang is because a lot of the times we were playing scrims, we'd play against some measure double shield, and we found that the double shield of Ryan uh, Orissa was countered pretty hard by Weeple. And when you played your comp, it was pretty obvious what you wanted us to do, so we just said, okay, just don't do it. We kill him, we win neutral fight, and then we win two fights off of uh, ults. So you would one fight off of ults, and then a couple fights later, we would, uh, went off of just having another ult fight. So. Like clarify, we did not know what we were running into. <laughs> As a we reason, yeah, Reaper was a good, uh, good counter to we it. Were, we were torn out to be the best <laughs> possible comp. Yes. And yeah. and I like I like that you guys play. You guys started to play me McCree again, and then right when they whip out Bangarang, you guys are already on that Reaper again. And I'm so sad. I was like, come on, let okay, us breathe. Which one's Bangarang now? I'm so, so confused. Ball Winston on King's Zero defense. Yeah, oh my God, Ball Winston. Is there another one? Bang a bitch or something? Yeah, Benga bitch. Yeah, that that one's a good one too. How do you come up with these names? Like, uh, my platinum. I mean, it's pretty easy actually. to come up with. It. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I swear the the ball Winston used to be called Super Monkey Ball. Uh, we call ball no, 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 Winston no, no, no. and flock. We call it uh, Super Feed, but whatever. See, Super see, feed. it's bangering because you had the Doom Fist in there. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. didn't didn't really work for Flush. They they did have to uh, actually play real comps. Unfortunately, they couldn't just meme yeah. this time. They tried to meme a few times, but they'd get hard stopped, and the flock would get some progress. Like, okay, wait, we need to actually try now. Um, yeah. Honestly, some uh, some highlights from what I saw from the flock in particular, because I'll get the flush in a minute, because obviously they won. But the flock, uh, Peter, Nero, you popped off like hell on Reaper on King's Row in particular. I was like, holy yeah. crap! <laughs> you, got like, so, you got like five kills in the end. <laughs> yeah, five K ones, but if I if I have to say uh, for flock, I think the people that really performed really really good throughout the entire season were definitely Nero and uh, Peter. You guys just like popped off. You guys were doing really good. I really liked your play. Oh, and uh, Aka Hap too. He's honestly been pretty. Oh solid yeah, true. Also. Very oh, underrated yeah. too. Aka Hap used a killer Moira. He's hella aggro, <laughs> but his ultimates and his cooldown usage is quite good. Really, after um, he used to feed a lot. I mean, I'm making fun <laughs> of him when I say this. He used to feed a lot, but we've really been working with him, and over time, we've developed a lot of synergy. Yeah, it's really been uh, it's really been helping our team to a success. What we have, yeah. Yeah, definitely. He's he's one of the more unsung heroes of flex supports for advanced. In all honesty, and that's saying something with some of the crazy ass flex supports we've had. Buffa Luffa, yeah. I watched that easy clap match. Man, he is yeah. just one nasty on a player. I'll tell you that. He is. 
the oddest player to watch, especially if you have access to comms, because he is dead quiet. Like, he doesn't talk at all. <laughs> you should see Swift. You should see Swift. He's the exact same. <laughs> really? That's funny. We're going yeah. to have a duel of, like, the two oddest flex supports in the entire league. Yep. <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> well, uh, to, to count, oh, Akahaf did bring, bring a body pillow to his palm, so <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> oh, good. See... I don't, I don't even know. <laughs> Actually, speaking of Swift, though, him and Ultra got uh, Player of the Match. First uh, first tie for Player of the Match we've had in quite a while. And Client got uh, Honorable Mention. Client, uh, he actually, didn't he finish out the series on King's Row with like a 6k or something? Uh, he got, yeah. I think he got a, a 6k or 4k, I don't, I don't know. I'm pretty sure... 6k, and, and with a grain of salt, because the last two kills, uh, they were just standing waiting for him to kill yeah. them. <laughs> <laughs> well, they were trying to reset, but yeah, <laughs> he, he still gave got it. <laughs> oh, yep, he got the 6k. Honestly, pretty good match, though. Like, I think the yeah. one map that wasn't particularly close was Hanamura. That one felt like it was close from the first round, and then, like, Flush decided to flip the switch, yeah, turn yeah. it to 11, and just like, oh, let's try now, and it's kind of, like, popped off. But King's Row and Li Zhang were honestly really close. Yeah. As Baz hard killed that last Legion point. I was <laughs> yeah. watching the pod and he got like four kills and I said, Oh my god, mm -hmm. what is that to do? Dude, Han Go ahead. Oh okay. Uh yeah. The one I was most impressed of for Flushed, not Li Zhang, but more so Hanamura. Because of the fact that their offense was really, really good, they like their first attack, they set up with the boot play and then just rolled through, and then second point they set up with like a a May bait uh, alt from the high ground, and that was just like beautiful play from them. I really, really enjoyed their play on Hanamura. That force point offense, it, it actually yeah. got itself completely by surprise, because normally what you want to do is once they dive high ground, you rotate bottom with the Batiste field and the sound sustain and pull one of the tanks into you. But the fact that we got booped, and I personally got launched like three, four meters past the force point choke window, whatever it's yeah. called. So I was, it just went into complete chaos and they really capitalized off of that. Yeah. So great play by them. Yeah, I, I think Flush just kind of looks to create that kind of chaos because they've been doing that all season. <laughs> <laughs> when it works, it's beautiful, but when it doesn't, it's just like, what the hell just happened? <laughs> they just exploded. <laughs> Which is interesting, though, because you look at like Newt Newt style coming into the uh, upcoming match, and Newt Newt really gets all the value in the first couple seconds of the fight and that, you know, punchy, piercing... Uh, offensive fight, and if Flush can get that chaos and they can sustain through that force punch, then you know that's where they believe. So it's two different playstyles about to come crashing into each other. Yeah, it's actually yeah. an interesting point. We can actually just move straight into the predictions with that. <clears throat> so, <laughs> oddly enough, you can see from the graphic, all, all four of us can predict because uh, I, I, I've had Newt Newt and Flush people on recently, so I was like, eh, I don't really need them on. I, I'd like to have four predictions, so we all predict the exact same scoreline, with some caveats, depending on what we're thinking, but we're all expecting 4-2 for Flushed, but hopefully it'll be a close match. From per, from a spectator's perspective, I guess, I'm sure the teams want to 4-0 each other. True. I think this is definitely going to be a close series, and honestly, I think that it's kind of a grudge match, because you got, like, clashing personalities and clashing like and friend crabes, groups like mega ghost ultra yeah Meg, yeah crazy. mega ghost ultra and baz and myth so you got a little bit of like the the rivalry going there the yeah. there's also the kaigo and zira you know <laughs> you know it's like you got a lot of personality on these two teams so it, it's gonna be very interesting it's gonna be definitely very interesting Honestly, I think one of the matchups I'm most excited to see is Plato versus Jazza, especially if they start going at a, at a Widowmaker, because that I'm very interested in seeing, because Jazza's cracked. Yeah, but I, I don't Jazza's think I've seen really him play good. against Plato recently. I don't um, know if Plato's on flush by the time they face that one. I don't, time. I don't think he was. I don't think he was. So I'm, I'm really curious to see what'll happen with that. Yeah, I remember now. Zero was on McCree hit scan at the time. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That was that. Oh yeah, yeah. That was. Oh, so yeah. that's how they lost. <laughs> 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 uh, just, just keep Zero on the projectile DPS. We learned from last season as well when he tried to play Zarya. <laughs> hey, it doesn't work. Just, just keep him on the good, the the few heroes he really likes to play. What I. 
considering to be like the biggest deciding factor though into this isn't necessarily the skill, but it's the ult management. I mean, Newt, Newt has this kind of sloppy ult management style where they overcommit a couple of times, but so does Flush at some point, so yeah. <laughs> they're both going to be going into this, you know. Maybe it'll just go between one back and forth where each the team gets their respective ult advantage fight. But it, it could just be something entirely different where it's decided in the neutrals. That's what's exciting for me, at least, about this series. Yeah. I, when I listened into Flush's comms, uh, they're kind of crazy <laughs> in their comms. So it's kind of like... I don't know how they are in matches because I don't really pay attention when they're on matches, but when they're in scrims, they're like going crazy in the comms, they're like having fun, but at the same time, they're like, they're messing up their ult management and they're like messing up once in a while, but it's like whatever because they they have the skill to back it up, so it's like. Actually, what can you do? <laughs> there, there is one sort of discussion topic that I guess some of you might not be familiar with, depending on how New York, or I guess Flawless would be the only one that. Might not remember. Uh, for season one, obviously Flush has a few members of Changdu Chads, and in the finals last season for Advance, they just kind of like choked it out. They they got in their own heads, according to themselves, um, when I asked them, and that, that kind of forced them to just flop hard against Crest. Like I don't know if they would have been able to win against Crest if they didn't uh, boom themselves before they ever got into the match, but like they probably could have at least taken a map. I feel like. Because Chengdu yeah. was cracked last season, like, when you look at the lineup, it's actually terrifying, but it was also really volatile players, and now they have people like Ultra, who I don't I don't think he's ever tilted in his life. When when things get tough, Ultra memes. So, like, <laughs> you have him. Plato seems to be pretty solid. Uh, Swift, I don't think, tilts at all. No, you don't see him really tilting. <laughs> I've, yeah. never, I've never seen Swift or, like, heard him talk. He no. is a very quiet... Uh, yeah. Korean man. <laughs> Very <laughs> quiet Korean man. Yo, same! Oh, my dude. conspiracy theory is confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I feel like Flushed's intended lineup <laughs> has enough stability where, like, they can bring it together and actually not tilt themselves off the face of the earth and just get stomped that way. The only two I could ever see tilting are, uh, Zero, zero and Client. Zero. zero and Client. Those I've are heard, the only two. I've I think heard client can tilt. can tilt, but this was like back on Hanamaru. I don't know if that's changed. That being <laughs> said, I know <laughs> that's that's been going on since Minecraft, my man. <laughs> that being said, I know Zero sometimes tilts, but you know, he's one of those few players that I know yeah. really, really wants to win these kind of yep. things. Yeah, yeah, I, I, so yeah I'm, I'm sure he's gonna. Throw, he's I'm throwing Zero a lot. Yeah, he does. Yeah. As long as he can, he can yeah, I, I think I'm more worried about Zero getting in his own head and getting psyched out because he wants That's what this I'm so bad. Like he has wanted this <laughs> so much since last season because he got so close. Yeah, so honestly, well, you go for Super honestly, I think if Chung Du Chads just kept Pandora their flex support, uh, <laughs> they could have won. We had no clue. Be sure to just him. Yeah, Ooh. no, he went off to Disney. I heard. Yeah. <laughs> he never I'm a little. <laughs> I'm a little concerned. Like one, if the match show for one match, they, I think he showed up for just one. He showed up to one match, yeah. What are you saying, you know, if the match lasts too long? I'm a little concerned that if the match lasts too long, it'll go past the bedtime. The team's <laughs> players are so <solely> young. <laughs> Actually, let's see. Ultra is like 19. Baz is like, Ultra's like 28. Ultra, Baz, Plato. Eh, they're they're pretty old roster. Except you just have client Zira and. Uh, yeah, just clients zero that are yeah. really the young Most ones. of them are actually <laughs> mostly older now. Yeah. Oh. Fair enough. Although Kaigo's pretty young too, I think. He's like IRL friends with Wannabe, so he's probably like 13, 14, 15-ish. <laughs> Although I think that's the only one on Newt Newt that's relatively young. Because I think everyone else is like college age. Yep. That's actually kind of weird. Most the, the two finalists this season actually are relatively old in terms of average age for the starting lineup. Yeah, I mean, they started out the season as Squeaker Squad, and now they're, um, <laughs> they're, they're mature adults. I mean, half of the Squeaker Squad went to Goats Only, so... True. Yeah, true. But yeah, that's, that's kind of all of the stuff for predictions that I've got. I, I kind of spent all of my analysis that I Playoffs had. MVP? Playoffs MVP. Oh, yeah. So, assuming either team wins, like, who do you think could get the playoff MVP? Just for, like, list off two people, like, one per team. Okay. 
Go ahead. Um, this is. Oh, no. Actually, I don't can, know. I can. I'll, I'll go because I already got it in my head. All right, I gotta give it to my man, Client. Man, he's a consistent off tank. He, he's very reliable to pop off, eat those males. I think he definitely deserves it from all the, from yeah, all yeah, the he's really consistent. I yeah, think. from all the problems he had at the start of Hanamura, uh, he's definitely made a name for himself. So I think he'll definitely get playoff MVP. And for, um. Newt Newts, I think it's, I think Kaigo. I think he's gonna frag. I don't know why. I just have this gut feeling that Kaigo is gonna pop off. Recto, you think... have anyone in mind? Uh, I would say Jazz or Megavus for New actually probably just Jazz for Newts and uh, yeah, Client for Flesh as well. Nero, who do you think? I think you know it's never gonna happen, but I'm gonna say Basilisk for the Flushed. You know, he's a good Lucio player. He's, when I played against him uh, last weekend, it always seemed like in these mid-fight comms where most of the stuff turns to chaos, he was always so focused, always knew what the win condition was and was able to do his job perfectly. And for uh, Newt Newts, I would say Buffalofo or Buffalofo. Not sure how to pronounce it, but I do know how to pronounce <laughs> it. His is oh, no, no, no. very, very good. I think he's got some real carry potential on that character that uh, you might not see in these other teams that they're going to come up against. Yeah. Let's see. I, for Flushed, see, I'll have to come back to Flushed because I have to think about that. But for Newt Newt, honestly, I feel like one of the biggest ways that they could uh, take the lead in certain aspects of the series is if Mega Gust manages to take out Ultra in that 1v1. So I feel like if he can manage to take that, he'd, he'd get a pretty hefty MVP for that. Especially because he's been getting a lot of honorable mentions lately. Not this week, but uh, I think like the last three weeks Gust? prior to that. Yeah, Mega Gust. Yeah. And then for Flushed, <laughs> I want to say Zero because he wants the win so bad, and he he's been like the leading win. the team so hard. But I think in terms of like in-game performance, ah, uh, God, maybe Plato. If not Plato, probably, probably Swift. Oh yes, I forgot about Swift because he's too quiet. <laughs> I, yeah, I think Damien should get MVP for Floyd. Damien. <laughs> His incredible mental health coaching. Is that the... Wasn't he on Wait What? I don't know anymore. They have like 40 yeah, I mean, mental health coaches. I think Dividing and I are technically mental health coaches. I don't know. They, they, they ran out of Discord characters. I know that much. <laughs> I think Zira has a Word document somewhere. Swift <laughs> is... Swift is known for um, skipping scrims for Valorant. So, I mean... <laughs> I don't okay, know. <laughs> <laughs> he's still really good, but like he skips a lot of their scrims because he's just playing Valorant or he's asleep. <laughs> oh, I guess. Well, I hope yeah. he doesn't sleep through the finals or skip the finals. That'd be terrible. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty much all I've got. We've been going for a healthy 20-ish minutes. I think that's all we can stretch it out for without making a drag on for too long. So yeah. we'll end it up there. Uh, Flawless, you got any closing statements? Yeah, uh, shout out to Team Primal in Horizon League. Fangs down. Also, um, shout out to Crusader Esports. That's going to be a banger of an org coming up here. Recto, you got any closing statements? Yeah, shout out to all my homies, my birds. We represent. Bring the clap. Thank you, Chuggy. That's it. And agreed, he's gonna get mad if I don't say his name. Thanks, agreed. <laughs> All right, and nearly got any closing statements? Shout out to my boys on the flock. Shout out to whoever gave me World Star despite only playing for half the season. <laughs> and uh, I hope the finals are gonna be fun. Well, where's my shout out, man? <laughs> uh, shout out to Recto, shout out to Recto, shout yeah. out to Flawless. And shout out to Ackley for having me on the podcast. It's pretty lit, not gonna lie. Yeah, I'm meaning to get True. someone on the flock, but. Whenever I would ask during the regular season, people were like, oh, we're busy, we're scrimming. It's like, okay. Well, oh, we're <laughs> so much. Don't yeah, me. and I, I didn't want to interrupt scrim. Same thing with Easy Clap. They're so hard to get a hold of. <laughs> I, tried to, <laughs> I tried to get them on. I got, like, Koodle once. I think I got, like, Colby one, or... I don't know. I got, you I got, almost like, had Yusuf. I you almost had Yusuf. Yeah. He, like, slept through or something. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed this segment. Tune in for the weekly segment if you want to see a breakdown on uh, myself, Pooter, and Grape's predictions over the course of the regular season. Not going to do playoffs because uh, reasons I'll explain later. So tune into that, and uh, see ya.
What's happening, ladies and gentlemen of League Zero? Akronator here, and welcome to the weekly segment. Uh, as I teased on my Twitter earlier this week, this will be going over uh, sort of how myself, Grape, and Pooter did in terms of the predictions for the regular season. Technically, I could do the postseason as well, as we've got a, to um, two out of three rounds done of the playoffs. But for the most part, I wanted to focus primarily on the regular season, especially because the postseason, there are significantly less matches, especially in the case of, like, Intermediate, where Pooter had uh, less than half the amount of matches, I think to worry about uh, by the time the semifinals came around. Uh, so <laughs> it, it was a lot easier, I found, to predict the semifinals aside from, like, actually, ironically, aside from Intermediate where there was a lot of upsets. Uh, but for the most part, uh, this there, there's a few different uh, statistics I want to look at here, and you can see the, the graphs on screen and whatnot. You can see the, probably the more janky of recording setups I've done so far. Uh, usually I'd just, like, take a picture of the graphs, but I wanted to actually scroll around because uh, in this case they're all on different pages and stuff and I wanted to emphasize certain things with my mouse. So we'll just kind of go from novice all the way up to advanced, to, yeah, to advanced. Uh, so you can see all the stats for yourself. So right here in this case, I'm in this page, I'm just going to be going over the the very basic, this is the team that this person predicted to win and this is the team that actually won and if they did in fact win they'll get a total, they'll get a point for their total and the percent correct and everything, and as you can see, the percentages might not be exactly what you had expected, <laughs> at least from the polls. Uh, there, there was not quite as much faith in Grape, and I think you'll be surprised. Uh, some of you possibly pleasantly surprised. Uh, maybe some of you wanted the, the narrative of, oh, he got everything wrong, but no, I actually Grape did pretty well. Granted, you can, of course, uh, try to claim that he had significantly less games, however, I tried to... Um, level the playing field a bit by showing the percentage that each of us got right. Uh, as well as later on, I will have more statistics to show you in regards to uh, what I think to be like not just who's going to win the match, but how close we were in predicting the scoreline of the game. Uh, but going f through through novice team first, it looks like you know towards the beginning of the season, you can tell that a lot of us got quite a bit wrong the first couple weeks because no one had any clue what was happening, especially in novice because no one had any clue whatsoever aside from geometric picking. You know, obviously the top SR uh, average team wisdom having a really strong coaching staff, and then uh, PC and Hyperflex in particular, like, no one knew what the hell was going on with that game, and I don't think the teams knew what was going on with that game back then, because uh, it went to a map 5, it was extremely close. And then as the weeks progressed, Grape actually got significantly better. He got quite, I think it was like two or three weeks where he actually got all three um, predictions correct. And most weeks he would get two correct at the very least yeah like this week he got some and towards the end of the season obviously we kind of had a feel for what teams were going to be winning in novice's case it was usually going to be geometric wisdom and plat chat uh, unless two of those teams were facing each other in which case wisdom usually came out on top uh in, in the predictions obviously they came out on top uh, in in reality every single time uh, so, out of uh, 30 matches, because the, the Novice had 30 matches, uh, Intermediate had 60, and then Advanced had 40. Uh, granted, there are some caveats there that we'll get to with the Intermediate and the Advanced Divisions, because uh, certain things happened that were kind of out of our control, and I didn't count that against us in terms of the statistics. Uh, but for Novice's case, there were 30 games. Grape actually got a whopping 24 games out of 30 correct, which is honestly pretty impressive. Uh, obviously, like I said before, he had significantly less games to study each week, so it would have been easier to predict. However, we will get to like the actual score lines later and see how close he got in terms of those. Those score line, those uh, stats might be a bit surprising to some of you. <laughs> and Grape, of course, got 80%. I did, I did uh, round it up to the nearest whole percentage just because I didn't need like 20 million decimal points, especially for like intermediate, because there's so many games and it doesn't quite divide uh, that cleanly into each other. So moving over to Intermediate, this will be a rather short segment by the way, although I see we are going on like four and a half minutes, so that's already longer than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> so going over to Intermediate, uh, towards like, I think the first week, yeah, Pudurik got like, actually surprisingly most of the games correct, aside from this one. Um, there were a few weeks where he just like could not get a single game correct. Not literally, I don't think it was ever a week where no one got uh, anything right in terms of us. Uh, of course, actually going back to Novice, I think there was that one week where Phone um, subbed in for Grape, but I think that was the playoffs, and I'm not counting the playoffs here, so that, that thankfully didn't play into it. However, I would have just attributed that to Grape, or maybe just not counted that, and would have made the percentage a little bit higher, probably. 
But going back to intermediate, like I know there was one week, it might have been in the second half of the season, where like, Pooter got maybe one match correct, and I felt so bad going through this because, I mean, just looking at the sheer number of games, you know, he had um, at least 50% more than the next largest division of games to study. Obviously, like I in, in advance had 40 games, Pooter had 60, so that's a huge difference there. And ultimately, the, yeah, the the total was not too kind. Now, there was one caveat here is that I didn't count forfeited games because we couldn't have predicted those, and that doesn't really help in terms of like how good we did at predicting the outcomes. Now, granted, in this case, uh, this forfeit for CDC in Intermediate in the last week uh, would have still counted towards Pooter's uh, overall percentage, but I, like I said, I decided not to count the any forfeits, and that actually... Uh, favors me a bit more in advance, but we'll get there. Um, so yeah, ultimately Pooter did only get a little bit over half. Sorry, Pooter. I, I do kind of feel your pain because he had so many games to predict. And a lot of these teams were honestly just kind of touch and go at any point in the in the, in the the season. Like Vitalize, um, CDC were either on top of the world or at the very bottom. You know, honestly, even if they did play DKE, in week 10, they probably still would have gotten stomped. I think that was the prediction, although we can uh, go there later on when we look at the actual map scores and what we predicted. Uh, you also had teams like Powerhouse or Yoink, or even High Society to a degree, which just kind of like were touch and go every single week. You didn't know if they were going to win games that you think they should have won or if they'd get upset by a team that was considerably lower than them in the standings. Uh, remembering back to Yoink's incredible run in the po in the uh, very end of the regular season where they just kind of dominated like the last two or three weeks, I think. Yeah, they they just won out like the last three weeks against teams that you wouldn't normally expect. I mean, like they beat Overcharge, and Overcharge at that point was uh, looking like a serious contender in all honesty. Uh, they beat out High Society, which that was pretty huge, although they did beat High Society the previous match. Uh, the previous um, half of the season as well, so that one I guess wasn't too surprising. And then they did they did beat Powerhouse, although I believe Powerhouse wasn't really prepping for them. Although I, I don't know if they would have been able to beat uh, Yoink even if they were trying. But yeah, ultimately uh, the, the second half of the season, as you can see, was significantly worse for Pooter. Uh, like this one, he got you know 19 out of 30. That's honestly not that bad. Like that by itself uh, is over 50 percent, significantly higher. You know, divided by 30, that's like 60, 63%. There, yeah, like 63% for that subtotal. And in like the second half of the season, he got 13 out of 29, which is uh, not not quite as good. Uh, that's like 29, yeah, 40 there. That's, that's kind of what killed him. I think, uh, was it this week? Let's see. Yeah, he got almost every single game wrong, aside from DKE, which I don't know how he... Oh, yeah, Bot Burgers, okay, fair. Because Bot Burgers and DKE were um, bottom of the standings at that point, and I think people were rooting for DKE at that point, so that might have just been like, a, hey, I think they're finally going to do it. I, I believe Pooter might have even said that when he was recording, and then, you know, wait, what versus Yoink Yoink was at the bottom of the standings. That one was pretty easy to predict. Uh, actually, surprised he predicted High Society versus Shanghai in that case, because Shanghai really had only lost to, like, what, Powerhouse at that point? I think they lost to Powerhouse again later on, yeah. It did. Uh, interesting there that he chose the the same thing that he got wrong in, like, both halves of the season. Interestingly enough. Actually, yeah, he did that multiple times. <laughs> Come on, Pooter, learn from your mistakes. Although, to be fair, a lot of these teams had completely different circumstances, like Overcharge in particular. I don't think anyone was expecting that one, whereas they were back in week three. But yeah, uh, unfortunately for Pooter, the, uh, that didn't really work out too well for him. Obviously, the first half of the season, that would have been a more respectable percentage, and it, it leveled off. He got more than half, so I mean, like, pat yourself on the back for that. And then going over to Advanced. Uh, this honestly doesn't look too bad from like comparing it to the others, but I would have expected myself to get a little bit higher. Although to be fair, I think the majority of the the, <laughs> the downward uh, trend for my percentage in particular and the total that I got correct was primarily due to two teams, which was Hanamura and Guangzhou, because let's be honest, those teams just were on and off 
at any random time at any point in the season. Like most other teams were predictable, you know, you had Hong Xiao, Goats Only, towards the bottom of the standings, you had Flushed and uh, Easy Clap towards the top, and then like Flock would be upper middle, Newt Newts would be upper middle, and Hanamura and Guangzhou would just be like defeating teams that they had no business beating, like Hanamura beat Newt Newt, I think week, uh, where is it? I don't know, one of these weeks. Hanamori, there we go. Hanamori beat Newt Newt, and it's like, that was a reasonable thing to expect Newt Newt to win that game. Uh, unfortunately, I think that was right around the time. Uh, yeah, that was actually right... Where was it? No, actually, that was a few weeks after the Flock game, because I was thinking the Flock game was right before they had people like Baz and Ultra Leave. So they must not have had enough people. I don't know, I have to go back and watch that VOD. Or at least check out what was happening, but for the most part, like, I think most weeks I did pretty decent. Uh, there were a few times, mostly thanks to Hanamaru and Guangzhou, especially when they faced, where it's like, I don't know, I'll just toss a coin and have a better chance than actually trying to analyze what happened or what is going to happen in that case. And there were a few other upsets, like I think uh, when Goats only beat Hanamura the first time. Uh, the second time is a little bit more expected because Hanamura were really out of the season by then, like they looked like they didn't want to make playoffs despite the fact that all they needed to do to make it was beating Goats Only, but Goats Only was on a tear at that point. They were looking like a more stable team than they were in the first half of the season. So yeah, uh, despite not doing too bad, Grape honestly did better. Again, of course he had 10 less games than me, but I don't think that's any excuse. I think uh, he, did, he did pretty good, you know? It would have been very easy to uh, predict some like make mistakes in some of these and he didn't really make that many mistakes I mean he only missed six and now granted of course I only needed uh, 38 in total because uh, obviously Newt Newt forfeited <laughs> both games against Guangzhou so I didn't really count those otherwise those would have completely screwed over my percentage even further but yeah 29 out of uh, 38 isn't terrible I feel like I could have done better maybe that's just me being overly harsh but uh, that that is not the end of this, despite the fact that I'm going on for 12 minutes, damn. I can ramble when I want to. <laughs> but, um, of course, you know me, I am very try-hard when it comes to everything to do with this league. So I did a little bit extra, and this might look very confusing, so let me scroll down here, and you can see a little bit more of what I'm trying to explain. So basically, I took the map differential that we predicted for each uh, game, of course, still not counting the forfeits, so I, those just didn't factor into it, and these were a little bit easier to uh, average out. But basically, what I did, and this is going to be similar to the game of golf, where the lower score is actually better in this case. Uh, so what I did is I took the predicted score versus the actual score. If it's the exact same, they just got zero, and it can go up to a difference of five. Obviously, if you predicted Team 1, for example, to 3 0 but then Team 2 3 0 there's uh, five maps in between there, so you get five. And like I said, just like golf, you want the lower score possible. So if you see a lot of zeros, that's a good thing. If you see a few fives, and I believe like I have one five, I think Grape has a five. Uh, actually, I don't know if Pooter got any fives. So he has that to brag about. <laughs> but um, yeah, and then I took the total, obviously, of um, total points, which doesn't really mean much. But then I took like the average um, compared to the total amount of games that were calculated, and that calculates out the average amount of maps that each of us were off by and I think this is honestly a little bit more uh, indicative of how good we were at predicting things because yeah you can predict like uh, you know map 5 and you'll say like oh well uh, Hyperflex or no PC Grape could have said you know PC would have won in map 5 and then Hyperflex manages to win in map 5 and that kind of undermines the fact that he was really close like his prediction was rather close in that case so I feel like this is actually the better calculation. I just wanted to do this because I think this is what everyone was expecting when I was talking about it in the in the tweet. Um, but this I, I found a lot more interesting because it showed exactly how close we could get. And uh, for the most part, honestly, starting off with novice again, Grape still knocked it out of the ballpark for the majority of the time. There were a few games where like he was just a little bit far off, uh, like especially early on in the season when we were trying to figure out exactly how these teams would match up, I mean like in the second half of the season, which is like what, one, two, three, four, yeah, from like here onwards, he never got more than two maps off, which is honestly pretty respectable uh, from my perspective. I know I know he's been getting a lot of flack from Novice for not um, seeming to have an idea of what he's talking about, but honestly this shows me that he at least has some clue. <laughs> you know, he's tuning in at the very least, so maybe that's just a little bit of uh, nerves from the fact that he was taking part in the uh, the spam 
last Friday night after the semifinals. But yeah, anyways, like uh, the few the few times that he did mess up, I think was like he expected Platchat to go 3-0, and I think. If I recall correctly, he helped scout for Platchat during the draft, so that's probably why. And Hyperflex uh, managed to take that win in in map five, so that wasn't like the worst thing possible. Obviously, a three isn't uh, desirable per se, but it's not terrible, especially considering the next week he also predicted a 3-0 for Platchat. I think that that was still some of his bias going through. Uh, but then OTW uh, turned out they were they're they're really good, <laughs> like throughout the entire season. And we're probably the second best team in the first half of the season. Uh, actually, did they beat? Yeah, they beat Geo in the first half of the season. So yeah, arguably the second best team in the first half of the season. So uh, they they three would Platchat, who was I think like fourth or fifth at that point in the season. Yeah, I think they were just above Rio at that point. So that one obviously gave Grape, I believe, his first and only five. And then a few other times where he messed up, like the first time Geo and Wisdom were. Uh, shaping up to fight. I, I don't think anyone was really knowing what to expect there, so I'm not gonna blame Grape too much for that one. Uh, I'm honestly shocked that <laughs> about this one more so, where he predicted Hyperflex to win, because at that point Hyperflex hadn't won in like, what, two weeks? Or no, I guess one week, because they had won the first two weeks and then they started their losing streak from then on, uh, up until the quarterfinals where they actually got their next win. But I guess like that one wasn't too out there, but I feel like if you really studied the VODs, you could start to see that OTW was really on a hot streak, and that first loss against Wisdom was uh, not indicative of them being a bad team. That was just how good Wisdom was. And then really, f besides that, like after week four, that is? Yeah, after week four, Grape was honestly on fire with his predictions in terms of map differential. And as you can see, his average, he was only 1.2 maps away from the actual score at any given point in time, which is honestly really good. Like, that is... Uh, as you could probably see from Pooter, and if I scroll over to me, you can see that actually is the best. So Grape actually did the best. And of course, you could try and make the excuse, oh, well, he had, you know, considerably less games uh, than anyone else to analyze. But at the same time, he still got it close. Like, he could still have just phoned it in and not gotten anything right. And he still got it right, so I, I give him a lot of credit for that. Moving over to Pooter, actually, and this one looks a lot less bad for Pooter. Ultimately, you can see the average there is 1.8, which honestly is still below two maps. Like, it, if you round it up, it goes up to two, but like that's that's still pretty good, considering it could go all the way up to five. Uh, obviously, there were some weeks, like the first week, where I, I'm I'm gonna give anyone a pass in the first week, uh, you know, where he, we just don't know what's going to happen. I think Yoink was really hyped up in the beginning of the season, obviously because I had a stacked roster, and not towards the not until the end of the season did we really get to see them reach their full potential. I think, uh, unfortunately, they couldn't really pull it out against Vitalize and the semis, but uh, Vitalize and their own writers. Right is uh, coming up on a hot streak, possibly. You know, I, I think uh, you could start to see, like, Pooter, despite not getting very many, like, match predictions right in terms of, like, this team will win, he usually got it pretty close. Like, he was generally, um, to, uh, granted, I, I, as I say that I hover over probably his worst week where he got, like, three games, uh, where he got four, four points away like almost as far away as you could possibly get <laughs> but uh he did have quite a few good weeks as well you know getting a lot of like ones a few threes mostly ones and twos which is honestly pretty good yeah not much more to say other than that um obviously not gonna count this one because edc forfeited uh his total is gonna be a lot higher obviously uh, ironically though I, I found this really interesting and maybe it's just because he predicted the same things for both halves of the season for the most part, uh, aside from map differential, but like predicting certain teams to win. Uh, his, his subtotals for like the first halves of the season, just because I didn't want to have a really long graph for the first and the second half of the season, were exactly the same. I don't know how that happened, but that's honestly kind of impressive. I couldn't have done that if I tried. And then let's just move over to advanced so we can end this out. So uh, for the most part... I believe I got two fives where I just like completely... No, sorry, I only got one five, I think, unless I'm misreading it. I think the other five would have been this one. Yeah, because Newt New forfeited, yep. Okay, so that... I only got the one five, and that was mostly because going into the, the first week, uh, I think it was the week after the draft is when we had the meta shift to Rhine Diva, and before that it was still double shield. And the problem with the flock, and why I rated them so lowly back then, is because Fortal 
was not showing a very good Orisa in pugs in um, like pre-draft. He was not showing a good Orisa in scrims from the VODs that I, I had seen at, up until that point. It was mostly against like Flush and I think I saw uh, Hang Zhao's scrim VODs against him or something like that. And like the flock was just looking absolutely terrible. And then sure enough the, the meta shifted to Rhine Diva and Fordle's a lot more comfortable on Reinhardt obviously so they, they suddenly jumped up to being like a mid-table team obviously making it all the way to the semifinals and having a pretty good match against uh, against Flush in all honesty. But uh, ultimately that kind of screwed over my week one predictions because I, I was still thinking in the mindset of like, oh yeah, Flax bad, and they weren't. <laughs> it was just like the meta was so unfavorable for them right up until it wasn't. And then, uh, let's see, this week was actually pretty bad for me. I had two games where I was like four off. Granted, uh, like I said before, like Hanamura, I, they were just one of those teams where I could never predict. And the same thing with Guangzhou, like, realistically, at that point in the season, obviously Guangzhou won against Newt Newt because Newt Newt forfeited. Um, and they did lose to the Flock, but at that point the Flock, like, immediately just came out of the gates and looked really strong. And they beat Hangzhou, and it's like, okay, well, Hangzhou's looking pretty weak, especially because they were already going through drama within their team. They were already starting to show the cracks, and I believe they broke up around, like, week five or six. But, like, this wasn't too far away. And only like two weeks away, and I believe at that point they might have even had some people leave already. So you, <laughs> so I was thinking like, oh yeah, well Hangzhou is an easy opponent. Guangzhou should easily be able to beat that. You know, they, they Guangzhou was having troubles at that point, but they weren't having enough troubles where I was expecting them to not be capable of taking out Hangzhou. And, and sure enough, they just completely shit the bed <laughs> and lost pretty hard. This one I'm still shocked about because uh, Goats at that point Goats only was not particularly strong as a team. And Hanamura had their moments, but they choked. And I was thinking like, okay, well Hanamura's solid at times, and that's going to be better than Ghost Only, who was just like never solid at any point in time. Uh, unfortunately, Hanamura choked way harder, and I could not have predicted that. That kind of hurt me there. Uh, let's see, this matchup, again, Hanamura, <laughs> just completely screwing over my... Uh, my predictions because they decided to go on a hot streak. I believe this is, it might have been actually week four that they signed Pascal from being their head coach to their starting flex support and obviously that was like a massive boost to them and I believe that was also the first week that they could play their full roster and I believe Newt Newt might have still been recovering from the, uh, the, the loss of their players after week three, like immediately after week three, Baz and Ultra and I believe maybe some other people left. So they were still recovering for that, but ultimately I thought like, oh, Newt Newt's still, you know, top tier team. They could still win, and ultimately they didn't. But uh, that was really like one of the last upsets. Because if you look at like my my scores for my subtotals, because this one obviously also would have been a really long graph. Um, the second half of the season I did significantly better, because again the lower score is a lot better. And uh, it was like one week in particular that I did. I felt like I did really good. I think it was this one. Like second, second, or no, it was this one in the second half of the season where I got pretty much everything correct. Uh, I, I did predict every single team that won to win, but I also got the map scores relatively close. Like obviously the Easy Clap Flock one. I think I was the only one who thought that the Flock would actually take Easy Clap to map five. Like I knew darn well that Easy Clap could have 3 0 the Flock if they actually tried, but the thing is, I didn't see Easy Clap really taking them seriously from their comments, so I was like, okay, yeah, well, if they, they sleep on the Flock, they're gonna actually have to try, and sure enough, they did have to run meta on uh, Reverse Sweep, if I recall correctly. But I, I did call that one. <laughs> and for the most part, for the rest of the season, I predicted pretty much everything else relatively close, aside from, like, the Flock Flushed match, because Flushed, for the first part of the season, they were going through, like, some struggles. It's hard to remember. It might be hard to remember for some of you now, because Flush has been so dominant for like, what, six weeks now? Something like that? Like from basically week seven onwards, they were just a dominant force that could not be stopped. But like, around like weeks three through maybe even up to six, if not five, they uh, they were going through like a lot of troubles, especially around the easy clap match, which was week three? Yeah, week three. Uh, where like Melon was just hard throwing so they had to like get rid of their starting hit scan and eventually they brought in Plato I think around like week five or six. Uh, but ultimately other than that uh, like the Guangzhou flock match at that point I was expecting Guangzhou t who had actually shown to be somewhat um, stable at that point in the season and flock would had just come off of multiple tough losses against uh, against easy clap and against 
plus, so it's like, okay, well, maybe they're gonna have some trouble with their mentality, and maybe they can't immediately rebound and turn off. They just completely decimated <laughs> Guangzhou in that match, so it's like, oh, well, there goes my prediction rating. And I think the last match that I really screwed up was Flushed versus Easy Clap because I was expecting there to be more instability in Flushed, and obviously that wasn't the case because they were uh, going in prepared and with a vengeance. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much the gist of it. I've been going on for about 25 minutes now. It's probably already going to be longer than any other segment in the show. So hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was rather interesting. Congrats, Grape, for being the most accurate uh, predictor of this season. Uh, with me very close behind Pooter. Honestly, in, by this metric, which I consider the more important metric, he did pretty good. Like, getting within two maps, I feel like, is rather good. So nothing to really be ashamed of there. I think the, these results, with just like the, the raw the uh, raw results of who won as opposed to like the context of how close it was and how close the prediction was uh, doesn't really matter as much as, as these more in-depth stats that I came up with. So hope you enjoyed this, hope you enjoyed this week. Good luck to the finalists. Um, actually when this comes out it's going to be a couple of days until we get to see any finals because both novice and intermediate rescheduled Monday, advanced is on Sunday, so enjoy the next couple days off I guess. And until next time, don't die. Thank <laughs> you.